All right, so this will be just a little quick video of kind of how I work through processing an image. Um, first, we'll start by importing some pictures that I shot tonight while out walking with my kids. They're already transferred over to one of my hard drives. Um, I always, you can see how I'll date and name my images based on activity and date. I mean, that's kind of my organization. I mean, Different people have different ways of doing it. So tonight I was just out walking with my boys. So I titled it My Boys 91212. 12. Then I'll import them. I'm just going to add them to the catalog without moving or copying or anything. We'll let Lightroom pull those in. Um, these were all shot with the Olympus OMD EM5 and various lenses. Uh, evening light. Love working with that. So. Um, there's this old gate that separates out one lot from another and it just kind of has this really cool look to it you know it's rusty and and whatnot so um, I'm either gonna work on that one or I kind of like the looks of this one my youngest son standing in front of this crazy tractor I like it uh, the crop could be a little bit better. I don't need as much in the foreground, I don't think. And since I don't have a circular polarizer for the 9 to 18 millimeter that I was using, I will probably fake that look. So first, let's start off with a crop. Um, I shot it pretty level, so I don't need to worry about straightening it out any at all. Um, there, remove some of the foreground. You can see that I have on the tool that just kind of shows you the golden ratio or the golden rule. Um, it's something that you can turn on in Lightroom. And you can cycle through the different configurations of it. And I don't live by this tool, but I think it helps in making a strong composition if it's something you're not familiar with doing straight in the camera. So there's a crop that I like. There's a couple of ways we can go about faking the the polarized sky look you can use graduated filter up here this tool in Lightroom and the way that works is basically you're gonna drag down this region right here and your tools are right here you can grab a blue which is what you'd want to use for the sky and you can see it already darkened up and here we can kind of reduce the exposure that's gonna help darken it up we can bump the contrast to do it. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can go about doing it. The only problem with using this method is, is if there were clouds right here in the sky, what you'll find is the clouds take on a blue tint. So we're not going to do that. Go back. And I hit reset when I should have just canceled the uh, graduated filter. So I need to redo my crop. Um, I'm going to export this into Photoshop. I've had Photoshop since CS4 and continually biting the bullet and, and doing the upgrade, um, but it's worth it. And I've been using the Nick plugins. I like those. They're pretty cool. Uh, I like the Viveza plugin. That one seems to work really good for what we're about to do. I also use it a lot for my landscape photos. So just checking to make sure I'm still recording here. So here we are in Photoshop. This is just going to be quick and easy. A lot of people might see it as a cheat to use filters like this or add-ons to Photoshop, but I'll tell you what, it gets the job done. So we'll launch Viveza. Viveza has these control points. And when you add one to a photo, what it's going to do is it's going to sample the color where you put this little control point at. So right now it's sampling blue and you can see right here really small swatch that's the blue that it sampled. So anything with that blue in it if I lower the brightness it lowers the brightness of all of that blue color and I'll just duplicate it and add a second one and 
if I drug it down here, it's not going to change the tint of any of the other things because they don't contain that blue. So, and you can see as I drag the control point, it changed in the swatch over here so you can see what you're exactly changing the, the tint of. We'll expand that so we get a nice even coverage here. Um, I really can't recommend Nick plugins enough. They're awesome for things like this. And this is just a really basic use of the Viveza plugin. I'll do another screencast later that shows how I use it in black and white processing. And um, I think you'll probably be pretty blown away at what you can pull off with that plugin. Again, here I just use the brightness slider. There is a contrast and saturation slider in that too. Um, and I'll show you later on what you can do with those. It's pretty mind blowing what you can accomplish. So, my iMac's a little slow. You have to excuse me. So, here we are. It's brought back into Lightroom again. And now that I'm back in Lightroom, I might bring the exposure up just a fuzz and lighten up the shadow areas a little bit so we can bring out a little more detail in the undercarriage of this tracker. Um, the OMD has so much dynamic range. I mean, I can continue to lighten this and pull out a ton of detail under there, but I don't need to do that. So we'll just lighten it up, get a little separation in here. And the clarity slider is fun in Lightroom. Just don't go overboard with it. You crank it up too much and your pictures get a little psychotic looking. Um, I really don't need to use the sharpening in this at all. I think it's plenty sharp. And then I'll just uh, export my image and we'll be done with it. And it'll go to Flickr. And I am one of those people who likes to name all of his images. And I always give them some kind of crazy name, it seems like. So there. Contemplating the mechanism. That's what my son is doing. And that's that. Uh, talk to you guys later. Goodbye.